Hi everyone, we are Jiqi Group and I'm Ming Jian Ma. Hi, I'm Yu Zhe Hi, I'm Wei Yuan Tang. In this project, we design a Class D audio amplifier chip. And with this chip, we can take inputs from a phone or laptop and play the music on a large passive speaker. And uh, let's go to the demo session. So let's get started with the demo session. Um, this is our design PCB board. And uh, this is our overall setting here. We have set up everything. And our uh, audio signal, it comes from the, uh, the laptop uh, to the jack on the PCB board. And uh, the audio signal will go through the whole chip uh, here and to the differential output here. And uh, the, the differential output is connected to our speaker. Uh, now I'm gonna play some music. At the same time, I will show you guys some awesome waveform here. Uh, so let me introduce uh, the waveform here. And uh, first, the green one uh, is the output of our, of our triangle wave generator. It has frequency of 500 kilohertz, and it has a peak to peak voltage of 1.3 volts. And uh, the right one is our input audio signal from the laptop. And the pink one is the differential output of our shape. Now I'm gonna play some music with intermediate tones. Uh, and you guys can just focus on the input signal and the output signal. So let's go. Now I'm gonna play some music with the continuous tones. Let's go. Okay, that's all for the demo. Thanks, Yu Zhe and Wei Yuan's presentation. And now I think it's our turn to talk about the method and the topology behind the Class D audio amplifier with tone control circuits. First, I want to give a general overview of why we always use Class D audio amplifier in the industry instead of other classes. As an electrical engineering student, I think most of us should be able to build our own Class A or Class AB audio amplifier in our bachelor degrees with VGT and the breadboard. The efficiency of the Class AB audio amplifier is marked in red over here, as the blue line represents the efficiency of the Class D audio amplifier. You can see the efficiency of the Class D audio amplifier is way higher than the efficiency of the Class AB audio amplifier. The reason behind this is the special structure of the Class D audio amplifier. Compared with the straightforward and simple topology for Class AB, the Class D audio amplifier has a very complicated structure. So this figure over here can represent the basic Class D audio amplifier structure. At the beginning point, we will have our input audio signal. And on the other hand, we will have triangle wave from the triangle wave generator on chip. These two waveforms will be compared by the compressor over here and generate a PWM signal. The PWM signal will enter the gate driver, which is consists of the non-overlapping generator and also the pre-driver. So the function of the gate driver is going to make sure the output driver works fine and also in high efficiency. After the output driver will have good structure PWM signal. The maximum voltage of the PWM signal should be VDD, and the minimum voltage of the PWM signal should be ground. Then this good structure PWM signal will enter the output filter which is always a low-pass filter. The low-pass filter is going to filter out the high-frequency signal from the PWM signal and generate an amplified output audio signal. After release this figure to the die photograph that we designed this year, you can always find there is some relevant chip locks that are connected to the structures shown on the figure. The chip is also very symmetrical, which means the top view is always identical to the bottom view, and I will introduce the reasons after. Okay, now let's look at the block diagram that we can see the topology behind our class D audio amplifier more clear. 
First of all, you can notice here is a larger box which is colored in green, and it represents the PCB that we built to test our chip. And you can also notice here is a inner box which is colored in dark blue, and this represents the chip that we designed. So at first, we will have input audio signal that enters the red channel and also the left channel. The two input audio signal will merge together as one and re-enter the tone control circuit which is located on the PCB board. The signal will enter the chip again and connect it to the op-amp over here. So the function of this op-amp is going to make up some losses happens in the tone control circuit. The input audio signal will enter the single ended to differential converter, which will be converted to two differential audio signals which are identical to each other but out of phase. Then the signal will enter the integrator and as an input to the compressor over here. So the function of the compressor is the same as I introduced before. It's going to compare the input audio signal and also the triangle wave from the triangle wave generation over here. As the output of the compressor, we will have PWM signals. And in order to make sure the drivers work fine, first of all, we need to make sure there is no shoot through happens in the driver. We need a non-overlapping generator, which can provide us a dead time at least 20 nanoseconds. We also need a pre-driver over here to drive the large driver and to make sure our chip has enough drive strings to make sure the output driver works in very high efficiency. You can also notice there is a control loop which is connected the output to the input of the integrator. That's because the integrator has two main functions. First of all, the integrator works as a low pass filter that can filter out the high frequency signals from the PWM signal over here and make sure the input of the compressor is the same as the input audio signal. And also the integrator can integrate the error signals between the output signal and also the input audio signal. Then this PWM signal output of the driver will enter the LC filter over here, which is always a second order low pass filter. And the high frequency signals will be filtered out and we will have amplified output audio signal at this stage. So you can notice we have very symmetry structure, which means the upper side is the same as the lower side. We have two purposes of design this topology. First of all, we can make sure the output audio signal will have two times larger in differential ones. And we can also make sure we can cancel all second order or fourth order, like the even order harmonic distortion, which means our speaker will give us a very clear and clean audio signal. After talking about the block diagram of our chip, I'm going to talk about the PCB that we designed this year to support our chip. So first, we will have our audio jack that can receive the input audio signal. The bar converter and the LDO is going to convert the 5 volts live voltage into the 2.5 volts chip VDD. We will also have our off-chip tone control circuits over here and the bias control circuits over here and here. The function of the bias control circuits is going to supply the bias current to the chip. And with the support of the potential meters, we can adjust the bias current accurate and precise. The test pins give us the ability to see the function generated by the chip such as triangle wave and PWM signals. The large inductor over here and the capacitor is consists of our IOC filters, and we can find our output signals at this pin and this pin. Now I'm going to show you some waveform that we detected from our test pin. The PWM signal should be the most important one, and you can see from the left figure, in prediction, we will have our input audio signal and also the triangle wave from the triangle wave generation. At the output stage, we should have a PWM signal that is very clean and clear. So this is a figure we detected from the oscilloscope. You can see just as our prediction, 
the input audio signal is inside saddle, and the white one is the triangle wave, which is very clean and straightforward. As the output, the PW signal, which is showing in green, is also clear and can be generated from our compressor successfully. So the next waveform we want to present that is important is end-to-end -end frequency response. So the figure on the left-hand side is a basic class D audio amplifier structure. And we want to know the frequency response of the output audio signal corresponding to the input audio signal. So we generate the frequency response of our chip using the optical scope. And you can see there is a very flat response across 20 Hz to 10 kHz. But ideally, we want this response to be across 20 Hz to 20 kHz, because human can hear maximum at 20 kHz audio signal. In this waveform, at 20 kHz, we have some attenuation. We believe this is because the bandwidth of the integrator and also the LC filter is not large enough. So for improvement, we will expand the integrator and the LC filter's bandwidth, and we believe the situation should be improved. Last but not the least, we are designing the Class D audio amplifier with tone control circuits. So it is also very important for us to demonstrate the tone control. For the target frequency response, we want our tone control circuits can not only increase or decrease the base audio signal, but also control the treble audio signal. So for the waveform generated from the oscillator scope, the blue curve represents the magnitude in dB, and the red one represents the phase. For the frequency response with bass and treble boost, we can see the blue curve over here. The trend of it is very similar to the red one in the target frequency response, which means we can increase the bass audio signal and also increase the treble audio signal. Similarly, for the frequency response with bass and treble cut, the blue curve over here is very similar to the green one in the target frequency response, which means we can decrease the bass audio signal and also decrease the treble audio signal. For the specification, we have two columns. One is for the target specification and the other for the measure specification. For the power supply VDD, the LDO and the bar converter works great. So both the target spec and the measure spec are located at 2.5 volts. For the frequency range, the target spec and the measure spec are both from 20 Hz to 20 kHz. Although there is some attenuation happens for the measure spec at 20 kHz, the audio signal can still be amplified. For the input peak-to-peak -peak range, the target spec should from 100 mV to 500 mV in order to make sure our chip works in a very safe region. And for the measure spec, the input peak-to-peak -peak range is from 50 mV to 1.1 V. In some extreme conditions, the measure spec should from 0 volts to 1.25 volts. But for the range that is smaller than 50 mV, the noise will dominate. And for the input peak-to-peak -peak range that is larger than 1.1 volts, there is some nonlinearity happens to our chip. Corresponding to the input peak-to-peak -peak range, the target specification for the maximum output amplitude range should from plus 2 volts to minus 2 volts at 4 ohms. For the measure specification at 4 ohms load, the maximum output amplitude range is from positive 2.29 volts to negative 2.29 volts. The triangle wave frequency is very accurate at 500 kHz, and so for the daytime is also precise at 20 nanoseconds. For the efficiency as class D audio amplifier, our targeted specification is 95%, but for the measure specification, we only reach 82%, and we are considering two potential reasons that cause this issue. The first reason is because we did not put headers after the LDO and the bar converter when we designed the PCB, so the efficiency loss in the bar converter and the LDO decreased our efficiency. The second reason is because the offset. Although we apply some extra voltage to 
to cancel the offset at the last stage to have a very clean output audio signal. The stage before that still have offset issue, and that also lowered our efficiency. For the total harmonic distortion, our targeted specification is 1%, and for the mesh specification, we reach 1.5%. So at this stage, we want to say thank you to Professor Kinget and also our TA Alfred and Hong Zhe. Without your support, we cannot finish this project. And we also want to say thank you to ETX2 group, which is the other Class D audio amplifier group in this semester. The communication between our two groups makes our work more effective. Finally, we want to say thank you to Xin Yuan Fu from Team Yang, who is a generous student for providing advice in layout design.